Yo, welcome back everybody to another episode of The Shuffle Pod. Episode number seven now, I think it is. Seven, lucky number seven. Yes, lucky at number seven. And uh, we got a big episode today, kind of, because we got Lost Origin finally out and we can talk about all the new Lost Origin decks and how they have been treating us. Um, both of us have actually played quite a bit of the new decks. I know Lindsay has had some pretty good success with Reggie Gigas with Thornton. Um, what? <laughs> getting second place in that Professor Polk tournament the other night. And uh, I've been playing a lot of the Lost Orange decks on my uh, live stream. And um, I think it's pretty good to kind of talk about all the different decks. And even we can maybe talk about some of the meta. Because I know people have been hosting their Lost Origin tournaments on Limitless to kind of get a feel for the meta, especially heading into Peoria. So I think it'd be a good kind of talk to see what kind of the Lost Origin meta looks like. What is the best deck out of Lost Origin? Because there actually are a few decks right now that are actually catching some people off guard with how good they actually are. But of course, before we get into all of that, I think it's time to do our little weekly roundup. So, Lindsay, how has your week been? Oh, goodness. My week has just been wonderful. I, with it being the Labor Day week, we ha I had the Monday off. I worked Tuesday, and then I had requested off Wednesday through Friday ahead of time. So I had a nice, relaxing week. Didn't get to work that much, which I needed mm -hmm. a break. So I definitely needed that break. I'm glad I got it. I'm very break too. well rested mentally and physically. Mm. Um, yeah, and I, whenever I I don't work, because sometimes I just won't work on a Friday, depending on like where my day off <clears throat> could fall. Because um, if we work a weekend shift, we get a day off during the week, and so when that happens, I'm then able to go to locals. So I got to go to locals mm. last night, which I always love doing. My locals are so much fun. My locals are good. Uh, they're good. Mm. Um, and like I, you know, I told them like, oh, we're recording the podcast today. So like locals, if you're listening, you know who you are. Um, but it was good. I ended up getting a booster box of Lost Origin and an ETB. So I usually pull absolutely nothing out of ETBs, right? Like I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. like you Pokemon got a bunch don't, of rambles, don't right? lie, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, come mm -hmm. on, like, don't lie. Mm -hmm. Like, do you put bad packs in there? Because there's nothing ever good out of ETBs, but I like collecting them so they can sit on my shelf and never do anything with them ever again. Um, so I like having an ETB of each set. And so I got a booster box and a ETB and also got five packs of Lost Origin from uh, doing well at locals. And then I also had half of Involving Skies box, right? So like we have lots of stuff. Um, right. I half half of a Evolving Skies box because from the team challenge qualifier prizing we got, me and another uh, another one of the teammates were splitting a uh, a box of Evolving Skies. So we essentially I met him there and we we split it. But out of those Lost Origin packs, I pulled wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. A gold Giratina V Star and a gold Hisuian Zorak V Star. So two Dang. two gold V Stars. Um. Cool. That's mm -hmm. kind of nice. We got the full art Giratina V. And and that's not even like I posted it on Twitter. I had so many pools. Um, mm. And then out of the Evolving Skies pack, I pulled a alternate art Glaceon V Max. Look at yours. We're you got matching. one too. Ah! Twins. <laughs> matching. We're twins. I didn't realize how expensive these cards are, like how expensive mm -hmm. the all the Evolution V Max alt arts are. I was like, oh, make, cool, maybe it's like. I mean, I'm a collector too, right? So like, I'm not really looking to sell it. Um, but oh yeah, you got to, you got them all there. Yeah. I just I love this <laughs> art, but I didn't realize how expensive these Evolution cards are. Like, I, I when I yeah, looked it up, valuable. I think this was like 150. dollars I was like, oh mm -hmm. my god, it's crazy. So I had some pretty yep. hot pools um, from that. So that was really, really exciting. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah. So that that was fun. That was fun. Mm. Um, I played Reggie Gigas at Locals. <laughs> yeah. the, the same, I know, I know. Who am I? Last week I was talking about how much I hated Reggie. And how <laughs> Keep you're Keep your minds it. open, people. Keep your minds mm -hmm. open. Keep your hearts open because sometimes things change. You might like something you never thought you would have liked, like Reggie Gigas. But I think yep. the gift energy is what really, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but I think the gift energy was really what did it for me. Um, plus, like, the Amazing Rare Veltal, like, it, 
Marquel, if you're listening, I'm so sorry. I had to amazing destruction you not once or twice. <laughs> so sorry. <Dang. laughs> so sorry oh. about it. But like, it's, it's, it was fun. It was fun. So that was that was pretty much my week. Um, yeah. What about you? How was your week? Which what, what have you been up to? So my week's been uh, pretty pretty decent. Um, so uh, what was it Monday? So the the last Monday, I went to a uh, midnight pre release uh, for Lost Origin at my local Fun. league, and uh, it was pretty sick. Um, so it was like the Sunday night. I arrived there around midnight. I got fourth in line to pick up product because a lot of the people from my league were going there that night because they wanted to get all the new cards, like all the Mirage Gates, get all the product. And I must have got over 100 packs. Like I spent a lot of money that night. I, I feel pretty bad. I bought like a booster box. I bought two ETBs. Just... I bought like 30 packs. Yeah, I was like just blowing money <laughs> that night because I was just like, I just want to open up Lost Origin. Um, I couldn't I couldn't control myself. Um, but surprisingly, no one there got the Altar Giratina, um, which was kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were buying packs. Like, there's like a big group of people that like, because you're allowed to buy like six packs of like the, uh, you know, the, the, we call them sleeves, you know, they're in like the little, like the packs are in like that little like case thing. They have like that, like wrap around it. They got like that protective like cardboard wrap. Yeah. You can buy six of them, um, mm -hmm. for like a deal at my league. So people were just like buying those in like bulk. People were like buying like whatever like 12 times 5 is they were just buying like a ton of them and 60. nobody got the altered giratina yeah 60 yeah my math is just you know all over the place but uh, <laughs> yeah, it was like people were buying like 60 packs at once and no one was pulling the altered giratina um Feels bad. but yeah i bought a ton of packs of lost origin funny enough i bought i had like seven pre-release kits and the etb and six packs of those sleeves and i didn't get a single mirage gate and i got, when i got the booster box i pulled five mirage gates out of the booster box so like it was kind of crazy i had like all those packs before, not a single one. And then I get a box and I get five of them, which was, I guess, good because I needed a playset. And then pull, yeah, the next the pull day. the rates haven't been great. No, be yeah. The pull rates are kind of bad, I feel like. Um, but then the next day, um, there was a tournament going on there, too. My local league organizer was hosting a tournament. Shout out to Manch Trading. They do sponsor uh, Pokex Word. Um, they were hosting a... Uh, another tournament and it was lost origin legal so those of you who were able to get early lost origin cards somehow you could compete in the tournament with lost origin cards so i ended up playing hisuian zoark v star gengar i went three and three i hit a lot of palkia which is unfortunate because i think the deck has a bad palkia matchup well not bad but it's mm. like not favored obviously and... gotta figure it out yeah yeah but i got a feel for the deck and i think the deck's actually pretty good um and i ended up going three and three i think the deck that won the tournament was it was like a tie between RCS Flying Pikachu, Aegis Slash VMAX, and I think the second place deck was, yeah, Giratina V Star with the uh, Lost World engine. So um, those were ah. the two decks I got second. And the other two decks in top four, no surprise to anybody, were both Palkia decks. Um, but that was the top four at the tournament. And uh, I didn't do as good. I mean, three and three is okay. I did beat a Palkia. I, I think I beat Palkia, Arceus Gudra, and then I beat the Charizard Cramorant deck, like the single prize box deck. And mm -hmm. then I lost to Gudra, and then I lost to two Palkia decks. Um, both Palkia losses were just due to like bad luck, though. The one game I whiffed the double turbo energy, and then the other game I whiffed the, uh, I just dead drew completely, which is unfortunate because my opponent also was dead drawing. So like I had, I had the chance to make a comeback, but I just unfortunately couldn't draw anything. Um, and then the Gudra matchup was extremely close. My opponent was able to Mirage Gate a Radiant Greninja and just take two prizes. But um, oh I got a feel for Zork. I gotta, yeah, I got a feel for Zork. I, I, I like Zork quite a bit. I think it has a lot of potential. And we will obviously talk about Zork a little bit later on the podcast. But I did do one other thing this week, which was kind of like a nostalgia reason. So now that school is back up and kind of we're back to like, I guess, like normal, like people like, you know, school's like fully open. Everyone's back on campus. I hadn't been to my college in over two, like two and a half years, pretty much since March 2020. Because um, my yeah. uh, semester, my final semester got cut short because of COVID. And I really wanted to go back to my college uh, to kind of relive some nostalgia because I never really got that closure <laughs> at my college because like it got cut short and I couldn't really go on the campus because of the pandemic. So I went there mm -hmm. when on like the first day of school when everyone was back going to school. I just kind of wanted to get that feel for like that that like first day of school feel. Even though I'm not actually going to school, um, I just wanted to go because I actually live like literally five minutes from my college. It's literally down the road. I could just walk there. So I ended up going there uh, for like a few hours, just walked around, listened to music. Um, I saw some old teachers, which was nice. It's kind of weird though, because like it's been two and a half years, and like so much has happened in that two and a half years. And that's what kind of like hit me and blew my mind because like 
I mean, I started the pandemic off with like 7,000 subscribers and here we are now, I'm at 32,000. It was just like kind of mind blowing to think how even like that was like a thing. Like I'm now like how big I've gone on YouTube. It's just like, just kind of hit me really hard. Cause like, I remember back when I was still in college, you know, I was still doing the videos, but where I'm at now, where it's like, I, yeah, it's my full-time job and all this crazy stuff happens, like tournaments, like all these IRL tournaments and all these things like the shovel squad and stuff. It's just weird to see how far I've come on YouTube since March, 2020. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go back to kind of like reflect on that. And, uh, what else was I going to say? So there was that. And then just kind of like, just kind of crazy how like the two and a half years, just how different my life is in general, not even just from YouTube, just like in general, like with what's happened in the last two years of my life, it's just kind of crazy how far it's gone. That's why I wanted to go walk around my college for that nostalgia trip, get a bit of closure. But that's really all I did this week. Other than play, of course, Lost Origin decks and make videos and stream them. I've been having a lot of fun doing that. And that's basically how my week's been. <laughs> I'll just like, oh, I just had like a huge, like, you know, reflection over my past two years and like this whole like mental journey. But that's all I did this. <laughs> yeah, that's all I did. Not yeah, special. you know, no, no big deal. No yeah, big deal. No, 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 but no that's big deal, great. No deal. I, that's, I, I think a lot of people don't don't do those kinds of things and kind of take mm. that uh take like the present for granted i guess and and not mm -hmm. have those chance to reflect that chance to reflect back so that's really awesome that you got to do that it's that's it's a good rewarding feeling especially the fact that what your youtube channel has grown literally five times so if, if you're close mm -hmm. to 35k yeah. now um that's that's insane that's something to celebrate for sure yeah it was just kind of kind of just something i want to do just like a mental health reflection and just kind of see how far i've come over the past two years. And I also, I'm not gonna lie, I did miss going to my college because I, like all, a lot of my friends go there or they went there anyways, I guess now they've moved on, which is kind of like the sad reality of it. Um, and uh, I just like, I always liked going to school. I was always a fan of school because I liked going to just like, I was never the best at school. To be honest, I never got the best grades, um, but I, I liked going because I had a lot of friends there and it was just like more of like a hangout thing more than anything else. I treated it like that. So that's kind of why I wanted to go and just kind of like revisit that and kind of relive those memories. Um, but yeah, that's basically what uh, transpired for my week. But of course, this week, we did get the release of Lost Origin. And I think we definitely want to talk about some of the new decks we have been trying out. I've been trying out all kinds of decks on my live stream. I know you have too, Lindsay. You actually, of course, have a lot of experience with Reggie right now, which got a humongous upgrade <laughs> with Lost Origin. So we definitely want to talk about some of the new Lost Origin decks, how they've been treating us, what we've been learning about them, and how they're working and how they're going. Um, Right. But before we get into that, I think we should give a quick shout out to Atlas Collectibles. Yeah, if if you're looking to get a great price on any and all Pokemon TCG products, go ahead and go to Atlas Collectibles and see the huge selection of Pokemon cards. They also have, you know, magic cards and, you know, if you're into that other stuff. But <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but make sure to use that code TSS12. You can save yourself 12%. Not only are you helping out yourself. What, what is it? You're helping out yourself. You're helping out Help. Atlas Collectibles <laughs> and helping out the cha or no, helping out channel, the Shuffle yeah, Squad. Channel Quad, yep. Help I yourself out. It. Help Atlas out. Help out the channel. They also have uh, some stock sealed product. Um, if you like buying bulk and you know risking your monies on on pools, and uh, mm -hmm. if you you know if you need singles, you know if you need one single, a hundred singles, whatever it is, they have it all. The ship worldwide. Go check them out. Make sure as well. Um, you can send emails. You can send. Uh, feel free to send questions for the chance of them being answered on next week's podcast to podcast at the shuffle squad dot com. You can also um, send us suggestions, topic ideas you'd like to hear, and even you know you can recommend guests that you would like to see on the podcast. So, speaking how crazy life is, like LDF, I think mm. we've talked about this before. Like I used to watch your videos all the time. Like when I first started, like I watched. So mm. like that's like how I know that is because like I watched yeah. all your videos, and like if you would have told me what like nine months later mm. that we would be like co-hosts on a on a shuffle podcast. squad pokemon yeah. podcast i'd be like oh, in what world in what world does that happen <laughs> i just can't believe that is already september right like we're yeah, pretty much starting so regionals we're pretty much starting regionals uh coming up this weekend having the baltimore regionals um so if you're going make sure to check the weather before you pack that way you know kind of what to expect but you know yeah we'll let we'll let our uh our Shuffle Squad weatherman tell you a little bit more about the meta forecast. And now it's time for your meta weather roundup with me, Hot Chop PTCG. Coming in as our number five deck this week, we have Reggie 
Gigas, a deck which I actually did rather well at Worlds getting at 17th place via Pablo Meza. And it's a deck where if Archers is, is continuing to not play Dunsparce, it can run a mock. And if Mew keeps on doing well, Reggie Gigas also likes to eat Mews for breakfast. I'm not really surprised it's here at number 5, and I think it's going to have a good purity in a matchup for two between you and me. Coming in at number 4, we have Ice Rider Calyrex. V Max, a deck which I absolutely adore, being able to hit for 280 or 310 damage via Choice Belt and Leon, respectively, is never ever a bad thing. And then having Power Kit as a backup attacker and being able to throw around water energy around as well is never ever a bad thing, in my opinion. Coming in at number three, we actually have Palkia. This might be the lowest I've seen Palkia here in a while. We all know how versatile Palkia is, being able to turn on those offensive jets with that super space well attack, and also pump the brakes with a rock sign and Romani and a path to the peak in a mid to late game. It's never ever a, a bad scenario to be in, and I don't think it's ever gonna drop lower than third, in my opinion. Coming in at number two, Flying Pikachu VMAX, a deck that got them almost a mirror match in Worlds, where one person was playing the Jolteon package, and Andre was playing the uh, Bibarvel package. I've yet to see really which version is doing better, but I imagine Jolteon will only get worse, especially when the Lost Zone engine comes out. And then coming in at number one, my deck baby, Mew VMAX. I knew Mew VMAX was poised to do well in this late Astral Radiance meta, and I think too, it is going to be poised to do well in that Lost Origin meta as well. Just got to play Bob and Weave on those Drapions and then just send them to the Lost Zone with Lost City and you'll be fine. Anyway, let's throw it back to Little Dark Fury and I think it is time to now do this week's Pokex word. Of course, this Pokex word of the week here. Are you ready, Lindsay? You ready to get into it? Ugh, I'm ready. I'm ready. I feel like I'm not very good at these. I need to practice. I've been practicing with the crossword puzzles and realized that I don't know as many names as I think I do. So I'm ready. This one might not be too bad. So, drum roll, please. So we got this Pokemon has seven letters in its name, and it is from Generation One. Okay, that's easy. Seven letters. Um, and it's from Gen One. So U I R T L E. That's that's eight. Um, uh, I'm just gonna look at my Funko Pops behind me. What's it's ponytails? Ooh, good idea. One, two, three, good four, idea. five, six. Nope. Dragonite, uh, that's nine. Mm -hmm. Mewtwo, six. Oh, what about what about Flareon? It is not Flareon, unfortunately. Oh, it's like a cheating but, by looking at my Funko Pops. Funko Pops. <laughs> but I will say this: it is indeed a fighting type Pokemon. <gasps> fighting type? Is it uh, uh, uh is it Mankey? Nope, it is not Mankey. Is that even seven letters? M A N. K E Y. That's, That's six. 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 That's six. Okay. Okay. Six. Okay. six. Uh, you got. I'll we'll give you one more guess before I give you another hint. Uh, one more guess. That's also six. Cubone is six. Um. Ma. Champ. I think that th that's eight, isn't it? M A C H A. M. Oh, is it Machamp? It is Machamp. You are correct. <laughs> you are correct. Machamp you're, is you're like, a Pokemon. Oh, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> its Pokedex entry states, using its heavy muscles, it throws powerful punches that can send the victim clear over the horizon. That is kind of insane. I can just imagine Machamp coming at you like, boom, and just punches you into next week. Yeah, that's, those that's, that's kind of a funny description. Yeah, that's Jeez. like the, uh, how how the Team Rocket always like you know like flat like ridiculously yeah, just like Team flies Rocket off blasting little... off again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think twinkle. there is an episode. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's there an Machamp. episode too where Machamp does that. There has to be an episode where he does that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. Uh, and, first yeah, one to Machamp. post it on Twitter. First one to post whichever episode that it is, if there is one. Whoever knows, post it on Twitter with um, use the hashtag. Guess that Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> There's got to be an episode out there. There's no way there's not. Just, that's too good. That's too good of a description of yeah. Team Rocket. I could imagine them trying to, like, steal them a champ and they're, like, big Meowth hot air balloon or they have, like, some, like, giant robot something that, like, <laughs> tries to steal them a champ. And then Machamp just comes in and just punches them into uh, the stars and they're just like, Team Rocket's <laughs> blasting off again. And then right, you right, will, right. Yeah. So it's definitely <laughs> out there. But, yeah, if you want to uh, definitely uh, play some of these Pokéx words, definitely go check out their website. Um, they're a lot of fun to play and they can help kind of, I guess, like test your knowledge of Pokemon, 
which is pretty relevant sometimes. It can help sometimes maybe when you just want to like do something. And it's good like brain exercises too, which is always good. So definitely make sure to go check out Pokex Word down below. And go follow them on Twitter. Because once again, they like doing a lot of giveaways on Twitter. And uh, you definitely do not want to miss out on that if you're in the ballpark <laughs> yeah, who, for getting some codes. Who, who doesn't like, you know, free codes? Who doesn't like free giveaways? You know, go check them out. Exactly. Go follow Pokex Word, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon-inspired puzzles. New puzzles are posted every day, and they recently launched a new Guess That Pokemon puzzle, which is a ton of fun to play. Go check them out at pokexword.com and be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. So yeah, now that Lost Origin is out on PTCGO, I think it's time to kind of talk about some of the new decks. Of course, me and Lindsay have been creating content and playing a lot of the new cards from Lost Origin. So we have a lot of knowledge and a lot of insight on what some of these new cards do. And I think the first one we should talk about is definitely the big card of the set, the big bad card. Not actually bad, but you know what I mean. Giratina V-Star, which I've played quite a bit on my stream. I did a video on it, and I kind of have some experience with Giratina, and I'm actually fascinated by kind of how Giratina has been kind of shaping right now in the meta, because the Lost Zone mechanic seems to be the way to play Giratina, right? You want to use Comfy, you got the Colrus Machine. It's honestly pretty easy to pull off our turn, like, turn two Mirage Gate, but actually there's another Giratina deck that's flowing around right now, and that is Giratina with Arceus V-Star, which I do think is probably like also good because Arceus is just an inherently good card and Giratina does have the ability to be powered up very quickly through Arceus and debatably this would be a little bit more consistent than using the Comfy engine and this Giratina Arceus deck has been getting a lot of attention right now I think in the online sphere because people are just like the Giratina Lost Zone engine is good but is the Lost Zone engine really that good it's sometimes you know inconsistent because the lost zone engine does use the new comfy which if comfy is in your active spot you go to the top two cards of your deck you take one of them in your hand you put the other one in the lost zone you can use comfy with scoop up net and air balloon and switching card and switch and escape rope to kind of pivot between multiple comfy so a lot of the time you can do like two or three comfy a turn which is like an extra three cards in the lost zone I think the thing that really kind of puts the deck together is that Chorus's Experiment Supporter card, right? You can look at the top five cards of your deck. You put three of them in your hand and two in the Lost Zone. It's a pretty good card. It's pretty actually very good similar. card. <laughs> yeah, pretty darn good card. It's actually very similar to um, an old supporter card called Sage's Training from Harkle Soul Silver, which actually was another pretty good card back in the day. Um, and these type of cards, you can like look at the top card of your deck, you take a few of them and you got to get rid of the other ones. They've always been pretty fascinating because it's better than sometimes just flat out drawing cards because you can actually see what you're getting and that can give you some knowledge as to what you want. And sometimes you can get rid of filler cards. I know yeah. some of the... Mm -hmm. I know some of the some of the Giratina decks have been playing at Battle VIP passes, which I think is really good because Giratina can actually play um, cards like Radiant Greninja. They got you know they want to establish multiple Comfies. So Battle VIP has been like a staple card in these Lost Zone Engine decks, and Chorus's Experiment is a great card for Battle VIP pass because you can actually find VIP passes on a Chorus and you can just get rid of them. It's a free card in the Lost Zone basically. Yeah. So Chorus is really good, and I think this is kind of the main powers powerhouse card of the giratina deck because being able to have that much kind of digging in a turn and powering up um the lost zone is really good because of course you want to put cards in the lost zone for the item card mirage gate and this is the kind of the the most powerful item card in the set and it's also the one that i think has the most amount of potential because mirage gate states you have to have seven or more cards in your lost zone so of course in the giratina deck you want to go Comfy, you want to use Chorus, and because of Comfy and Scoop Up Net, you can use Comfy a lot of times, and this is why it's really easy to actually pull off a turn to Mirage Gate, because you're able to get it so quickly with Comfy and Chorus. Um, and Mirage Gate allows you to search your deck for up to two different types of energy, basic energy, and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. Meaning that, against with Giratina, you can go find a Grass and a Psychic Energy for free and attach it to Giratina. And Mirage Gate is what makes Giratina so good. Yeah, and uh, there's there I've seen a few different ways um, mm. with the Giratina as well that I kind of want to go over. Like you said, with using the Radiant Greninja, some people have been using that um, and having the water energies in there as well because so Giratina just needs grass and psychic energies. And the third one is a colorless. So I've seen a lot of people doing the water energies and using Mirage Gate with the Greninja. But in my opinion, I just... 
I see where that could be good. Uh, you have another way to draw cards, but I feel like with the Lost Zone, there's you have the unfortunate potential to get a lot of those energies stuck in the Lost Zone. And so I feel like running, I, I don't know, I just... I, I think Sableye, I think the new Sableye is overall, I don't want to say necessarily better or worse because they're not like competing against each other, but the Sableye I think definitely needs to go in Giratina because you are using the Lost Zone, you are getting cards in the Lost Zone, and so once they are, I think it's 10, you need to have 10, yep. 10 energy or 10 cards or in I the Lost Zone. I think 12 cards actually in the Lost Zone for, or maybe it is 10. I think it's I 10, think it but it does 12 damage yeah. counters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and just for one psychic energy, this little single prize table, I can just spread 12 damage counters any way you like. Like that's, that's insane. Um, and I, I can see why, you know, I can see why the Radiant Greninja is also good. You know, you can also do that 90 damage, you know, double spread, but you know, like Mana Fee, uh, doesn't get around you can't get around that damage with with if they have the manaphy out with the sable eye the 12 damage counters that does go around manaphy um yeah you you have to use it later game but i i think that it's still very very good um i've seen some people use the crams i don't think it's bad um i think it's cute you know if you want to throw it in there you can but actually something my favorite addition to giratina which i honestly think is kind of a must is Ooh. memory capsule Using the memory capsule on the Giratina V Star, that way you can use one the shred attack. You don't necessarily need the cram for a mill tank or whatever else, um, but you can use that shred attack, and then you can knock out um, some one prize Pokemon without having to discard your energies to the Lost Zone early. Yeah, I kind of I kind of agree with you on that. From what I've experienced with Giratina, you can't use the Giratina V Star against a lot of the single prize decks. Like if you get paired against Reggie or Solrock Lunatone. On the ladder, you can't use that Lost Zone attack on Giratina because you realistically don't have a lot of energy. And I, I do I kind of agree with your point you said earlier how, like, in the Lost Zone deck, it's actually really common to dis kind of, like, ditch a lot of energy and put it in the Lost Zone early on while you're digging with Comfy and Chorus. I think on average, you're probably going to have at least two or three energies already in the Lost Zone from your Comfies and Choruses early on when you're trying to set up the Mirage Gates. And I kind of agree with you on that one, where, like, Giratina can't afford to do that 280 damage attack every single turn against single price decks. Obviously, it trades really well against V-Stars and V-Maxes, but yeah, against single price decks, it is a lot harder to kind of chain the attacks. And I think Giratina... Is kind of we're still kind of in the early honeymoon stages of like the card and people are still figuring out like the best way to play it and like how to utilize it. But I think Giratina needs to kind of have a really good strategy against a lot of these single price decks, right? Because you really can't afford to attack that many times with that loss zone attack. And right. I think that is a good point. Yeah. I, I, I think memory capsule is a good a good way to mm -hmm. do that, as well as the sable eye. I mean, if you think about like some sobbles, like a dunsparce, uh manaphy even, like those those are pretty much at least Manaphy is almost a like guaranteed staple in any single prize mm -hmm. deck. And that Sable, I can just go ahead and knock out a Manaphy. Like, just, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a solid choice. Um, I think it's a really big way to help. Um, something else I want to mention, too, kind of like off of what you said, is I've seen a lot of people use Oranguru, the mm -hmm. Primate Wisdom ability to yeah. put... Uh, whether they have, you know, filler cards in their hand to put back on top, they know for sure that they can, like, discard it with um, Comfy's ability, as well as putting energies back in the deck for Mirage Gate. Yeah, Guru is something that I've also kind of heard about, where, yeah, you can use it to, like, put filler cards in your hand into the Lost Zone. And Guru can, like, sometimes give you, like, extra cards in a turn, because it is theoretically a, a draw one card, which is kind of nice. And you also have the ability to maybe, like, counteract Marnie. One really good strategy against some of these, you know, Giratina Comfy decks is to actually play Marnie. Um, I've won a lot of games against Lost World decks because I Marnie them into a small hand, and... They don't get a chorus off of that, and I knock out their active comfy, and they're kind of just stuck with not really much going on. And that's kind of where the Oranguru can sometimes come in clutch, because you can use Oranguru to, like, put something on top of the deck, you know, kind of to counter the Marnie. Because I think Marnie is a really good card against it these is. Lost Zone decks. Yeah. Because Lost Zone decks don't actually play a lot of draw supporters. A lot of the time, it's literally just four chorus, a couple boss, and sometimes they'll play, like, maybe, like, one Marnie or, like, one Roxanne or maybe, just like, a Research. But for the most part, they don't play a whole lot of draw support. And Marnie is really good, and that's maybe where the Oranguru is going to be really good against the Lost World decks. I um, agree. But 
I think another thing that Lost World decks have to kind of start accounting for nowadays is going to be Empoleon V. Empoleon V, I have seen pop up a lot now because Empoleon is really good right now against a lot of decks, not just the Lost Zone decks and obviously like the other decks like Reggie, which is also just really good right now, and Lunar Rocks, but Empoleon is just really good against um, a lot of big basics. There's a lot of basics right now that it can shut off. I mean, it's shutting off stuff like Comfy, Reggie Gigas, Soul Rock. It's shutting off Cramorant even. But yeah, I think the Empoleon is actually really good right now. And I've seen a lot of people play it. I've been experimenting with Empoleon right now too. Um, I have a really cool deck built IRL that I'm planning to bring to my league in a couple weeks when I get back from Baltimore. Um, and I have some cool concepts with Empoleon. I think Empoleon is something that you definitely have to kind of count like kind of have a counter for now because i think it's going to pop up a lot more i think most palkia lists are also going to start playing one empoleon in their deck it's just that good of a card right now and with all the with all the decks that utilize basic abilities empoleon is like just really really good and i think the lost zone deck has to have some kind of way to counter empoleon because palkia because of the amount of power it has with irita bucket greninja inteleon drizzle it's really easy for them to find empoleon and put in the active spot on like the first or second turn. So I think the Lost Zone met engine decks have to have a way to counter Empoleon. Palkia, in my opinion, is still the best deck going into, you know, going into this format. Palkia is still the deck to beat. And Palkia is going to start playing Empoleon now, and it's going to be very bad for Lost Zone decks. And I think Lost Zone decks have to kind of find a good way to counter Empoleon consistently. I mean, you do have cards like Escape Rope, you can play Boss, but you have to I feel like there has to be a better foundation to stop the Empoleon. Path to the um, Peak. Yeah, Path works. You could try out Path in the Lost Zone deck. So you just really need to find a way to shut off Empoleon. Because I think Empoleon is a very good card right now. And with Palkia still being the best deck, I think Palkia is going to start playing the Empoleon now. And it's just going to make it really hard for Lost Zone decks to work. Because without Comfy's ability, you're really slow. And you're not going to be able to pull off a Mirage Gate quick enough. And by that point, the Palkia deck might, might have already just kind of set up a kind of a good enough board state where you realistically can't win the game. So I think you definitely got to respect Napoleon. And yeah, there's uh, somebody at my locals who was uh, testing out Giratina last night with the Leafeon V um, mm. from Evolving Skies. And even with Napoleon out, you're still able to use the Greening Cells ability and just go ahead and attach a Grass Energy from your deck to Giratina. It's really, really good, especially if you go first because uh, it does end your turn. But that is another way to go ahead and go ahead and accelerate one energy and then, you know, be able to um, if you're able to attach for turn that turn mm. as well, that's great. And then you're potentially looking at already being able to attack the next turn. Yeah, I've heard some talks about Leafeon, too. I, I don't hate it because you can also play like the V-Star in your deck, too, which can be built up with like Mirage Gate. And you maybe sometimes get Leafeon's V-Star power if sometimes you don't use Giratina. Because there's actually a lot of people right now respecting Giratina's V-Star power. There's actually quite a few counters to Giratina. Um, some water decks have actually been incorporating the new, or not the new, but they've incorporated Wash Energy in their decks, which allows you to basically be protected from Giratina's V-Star power. And they've also been playing cards like Big Paracel. There's the new Snorlax, which I've actually seen a lot of um, a lot of hype for. Snorlax has the ability where it can't be affected by effects of attacks, meaning that Giratina cannot instantly KO the Snorlax with its V-Star power. Giratina has to use its uh, its main attack to knock out the Snorlax, and this is maybe where like something like the Memory Capsule could be good because Snorlax is a really good kind of way to kind of make Giratina burn resources and you know, kind of waste resources effectively to take out this one Pokemon that you have to put two energy in the Lost Zone to counter, which sometimes you can't afford to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's why that Memory Capsule build might actually be the way to go. I think it, I think it needs one. I think it needs one, right? I, I do really think it needs one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think uh, Giratina definitely has to have some kind of secondary attacking option that kind of helps you against some of these more harder walls like Snorlax or Paracel or that wash energy that's been catching a bit of popularity right now. Right. So I think, yeah, Giratina's got the fundamentals to be good. I think with all the things we listed, with all the counters to Tina's V-Star power, um, the Empoleon, the Marnies, I think you definitely have to kind of make sure that your Giratina deck can handle all these measures that people are going to take now to kind of counter the Giratina deck. Oh, Gudra V-Star. Mm. I, I'm not sure how I feel about it, to be honest with you. I, I feel like everyone's hyping it up and everyone's like praising it, but I'm just not, I'm half and half. I feel like it's, it's not, 
if you get Fantina going, it's basically impossible to win. Like, it's basically mm -hmm. impossible to, like, knock out that Gudra. But, like, yeah. I mean, a gusting card can reset it. Um, I mean, like, you know, if you don't have a big parasol on Gudra, Star of Requiem can just knock it out. Amazing Ray Veltal can just knock it out. Um, so, like, it, but I will say, once you get Fantina rolling, uh, preventing 120 damage from Pokemon V, as well as um, the 80 damage with, preventing 80 damage with the attack as well, I mean, preventing 200 damage is, you know, not bad, <laughs> I will say. It's uh -huh, not definitely bad. Definitely not bad. Definitely not bad. Um, I haven't played Gudra yet myself, but I have played against it, and it is a bit of a scary deck. It Obviously, most Gudra lists kind of play the same Lost Zone engine that we just talked about, and when they get that, like, Gudra going early, it is scary, because one way you can beat Gudra is if you can maybe knock out those Gudra Vs before they evolve, or even getting hits into the Gudra V star before it evolves. Like, trapping Gudra V star in the active can be a decent strategy, because you either make them waste their V star power, or you just get like a free hit on them, and if they don't V-Star power, then you can just like KO them and uh, kind of take prizes that way. Because the Gudra deck is scary. I mean, they have a lot of resources. They can also utilize Radiant Greninja, and they can use the Mirage Gate Water Energy combo that I think yeah. is pretty deadly right now. Yeah. So I, I think that that whole Water combo with the Radiant um, Greninja works a lot better in Gudra than it does in Giratina. And that is just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Um, I, I originally thought that it would be better with Radiant Gardevoir, but I feel like some of the extra draw support is really, really nice because that, that mm -hmm. isn't stopped by Empoleon. You can still have that draw support mm -hmm. even against Empoleon because um, Greninja does have a rule box. But the Gardevoir, I mean, we're preventing 20 damage only from Vs as well. Um, and I feel like that on top of Fantina, just preventing the damage from the Vs... Uh, is it really going to do much? If it was 30, maybe. Because then we can maybe cancel out that choice belt. But just preventing the 20, I feel like, doesn't do as much as I wanted it to. Uh, so I do like the Greninja build with, you know, using the Mirage Gates and kind of, like, going more that way is a little bit better for Gudra. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm torn on the Gardevoir, too. Because I think Gardevoir is interesting. It's definitely good. But I feel like Greninja is just always better, especially when you have the ability to attack with it. Um, if the opponent doesn't, you know, predict the Moonlight Shuriken or they don't have the Mana Fee, then Greninja can be very punishing. And I've, I literally lost the game to Gudra because of the Greninja. I prized my Mana Fee, and I didn't, I didn't have anything to do against the Greninja. I had two heavily damaged Zorak V-Stars, and I'm like, well, if you just have the way to attack a Greninja, I just lose. And in the Gudra deck, it's easy for them to have that because they have access to you know the water energies in a pretty high amount because in the giratina deck you have to play like two or three waters and you got to find them at the right moment you obviously can play training court to get them out of the discard if you get rid of them early on but in the gudra deck it's really easy to have the water energy in your hand so it's even easier for greninja to come out of nowhere with those surprise moonlight shuriken plays and gudra is one of the decks that can respect it but i do kind of agree with you on like some of the gudra's like harder matchups I think it has a really tough Giratina matchup. Any deck that can do a lot of damage is, like, kind of tough to beat because it's kind of like Stone Journer, where, like, Stone Journer was kind of a really good deck. Obviously, it did really well against Palkia. It did really well against Arceus variants, but it did struggle against decks that had the ability to just do a lot of damage. And stuff like, you know, Mewtwo V Union, Mew V Max is another big threat. Now that we have Giratina and Hisuian zorak v-star there's a lot more pokemon now that can just do you know flat out like 300 plus damage or 280 damage pretty easily and gudra reducing 80 damage that's not enough because they'll still do 200 to you and that's still going to two shot you even if you get the full heal in it's just still not enough to prevent you from kind of getting ko'd and i think gudra does struggle against those and it will struggle against those you know insta ko decks right like you know, decks like Giratina and Eveltal <laughs> that have the ability to just knock Gudra out. If I'm not going to be able to do much damage to Gudra, all right, I'll just blip it off the board by just insta KOing it, right? Yeah, and I think another weakness that Gudra has are decks that have a lot of that gust power. Uh, like, mm -hmm. especially with Palkia using their cross switchers, uh, escape robot, like all that stuff, you know, just simply resetting that Gudra out of the active. It just kind of, you know, it, I think it gets rid of. I know it gets rid of the 80 for sure. I'm not sure if it resets Fantina. I would have to read Fantina's text a little bit closer. During your opponent's next turn, all of your Pokemon. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. 
you can at least reset the the 80 damage so you're like you know you're doing 120 less damage um you know you, you can always good. try to get away like that get around like that um yeah but they can do those gust combos when you don't have the pantene activated and that's where things get kind of sketchy right um yeah, Gud- Gudra's interesting, though. I think it does kind of fill in that hole in the format that, like, Stone Drinner kind of had. And I don't know if Stone Drinner is still good in Lost Origin, but Gudra might just be better than Stone Drinner because it kind of does what Stone Drinner does in one kind of swing. Stone Drinner heals and then attacks, where Gudra mm-hmm. kind of tanks and then attacks. But one other Gudra deck I've seen is actually Arceus Gudra. <laughs> it feels like Arceus is just that good of a card. But Arceus Gudra does give you the ability to not have to worry about the inconsistency of the Lost Zone mechanic. And you get access to extra healing capabilities. I know the Arceus Gudra deck plays Hyper Potion with the double turbo energy. Basically, it's Arceus Duraludon, but with right. Gudra instead. And yeah, the ability to play the um, the double turbo Hyper Potion is really good in Gudra. Like, I think that may be the better Gudra deck over just kind of straight Gudra. Right, because then you're, you, you get to use, you know, Starbirth and search for whatever two cards you want. And while moisture star <laughs> well that's like an all right ability like you can heal mm-hmm. with basically no punishment other than the fact that you use your v star ability hyper potion i feel like it, you're right is just kind of better you know you can always mm-hmm. starbirth for you know a melanie and attach and do whatever else so it's yeah i'm kind of with you on that i kind of want to try the rcs build and see how that goes um Although yeah. Fantina, Fan, once you get out Fantina, it is really hard to beat. So it'll be interesting to see which kind of one of those builds comes out on top. Yeah, I agree. You can't play the Fantina in the Arceus deck, unfortunately, but you can use uh, Hyper Potion. So it kind of balances balances itself out. Um, I think both Gudra builds are interesting. I think Gudra definitely has the potential to be good. I don't think it's that bad of a card. Um, but another V-Star we can talk about is actually Hisuian Zoark V-Star. I know this card has been getting a little bit of attention, actually. Um, so Zork was kind of like the card people were, like, skeptical about. Ooh, people are skeptical about it because it's like, is it really that good? It feels a little too, like, reliant on, like, all these different, you know, kind of things to have to go right your way. But the deck's been doing well online, and people have been actually saying that, hey, you know what? It ain't as bad as we thought it would be. It's it's not the not the Reshi Ram and Zekrom of the deck of the set. It's not the Rayquaza V Max of the set. It's actually you know a pretty solid card. Of course, with a full board of Pokemon with damage on them, a Zork's attack does 50 damage for each of your Pokemon with damage on it. If you have six Pokemon in play, that is 300 damage. With a double turbo energy, you can do 280. It attacks for one energy. It can do 280 damage for a single energy, which is kind of insane. You also get access to Gengar and Gapejaw Bog and Damage Pump. So it's actually really easy to get everything damaged. Damage Pump is insane um, because you can go Gengar, Damage Pump the two Pokemon, and immediately right there, that's a plus 150 damage. So Zorak's been looking pretty good. Yeah, it Um, seems really solid. Um, I've also seen some decks run a couple psychic energies to use Gengar as a second attacker. Um, I feel like that's a good way around Palkia. Um, with mm-hmm. a f- if Palkia has a full bench, Gengar can do, what, 100 damage with just a yeah. psychic energy? So, mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the Gengar attacking is interesting. It does give you an out to Mill Tank, but I, I'm not sold on the Gengar attacking, actually. Uh, when I played the deck to the tournament, I was also playing the psychic energy build, but... Uh, I, the Gengar never attacked, even against the one single prize deck I played against, the Cramer and Charizard deck. I didn't use the Gengar once to attack. Like, I think the Psychics, the only benefit you get is that you can combine the Psychic Energy um, against Duraludon, because you don't play Path, and Duraludon, you can't attack, right? So maybe the Psychic Energy could be good for, like, the Duraludon matchup, where you can I, just go I attach mean, two Psychics, but... What I think, like, I think against Palkia, it's really, really good, because you, you obviously, like... I, Zorak is not that mm. good against Palkia, so the way I'm viewing it is you don't really fill up your bench that much. So Zorak's not doing that much damage, but you at least get a hundred chipped off with the um, with the Gengar, and then you know the Gengar is going to get return knocked out, goes in the discard pile, but then you use the ability to put it back on the bench, add another damage counter, and hopefully by that point you have enough cards to be able to knock out the Palkia at that point. Yeah, that is true. Um, what I found against the Palkia matchup, when I played against in the tournament, because in the tournament I played in, I played against three Palkia decks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, Palkia's like, I feel like whoever gets the first two prize knockout usually wins. That's kind of how I play the matchup with Zork is like, 
I just try to go gung ho and I'm like, okay, I'm going to get your, I'm going to get the first two prize knockout and I'm going to win the game because I did that. And it worked in the first game. The second game, I mean, the two other games are just, I got unlucky. Like I whiffed an energy to attack. Um, and also I bricked in the other game, but I think that against Palkia, if you can take that, like that first two prize KO, usually you're fine to win the game. Um, now the cool thing with Zorak is how aggressive it is. Now, Zorak has its V-Star power. Its V-Star power is literally Professor's Research. It's literally a discard your hand, draw seven. So in a lot of matches, you can actually use Zorak's V-Star power with Research to draw 14 cards in a turn, or you can use its V-Star power instead of playing Marnie or Research to then try to find a boss's order. And that's where it gets really good. If going first with Zorak V-Star, if you get a good enough setup, it's very possible to go Zorak's V-Star power plus maybe like a Crobat. And it's very easy to find the boss's order to knock out the V-Pokemon because you're able to use your V-Star power as your draw supporter and then find the boss to KO a V on the bench. And that's something that I've been really enjoying with Zorak is the ability to do that. Um, and also the ability to discard your hand, draw seven cards combined with research and Marnie and Crobat does make it really easy to kind of dig through your deck if you're really looking for that double turbo energy. Um, cause I've seen some lists play Shrekking Shoes, some lists play Energy Lotto, um, and people just really like, okay, Zorak has to find the double turbo energy and there's a possibility you prize one, you only have three in your deck, it's harder to find. And that's where, you know, kind of the ability to do the V-Star power on top of, the extra draw comes in clutch because it makes it really easy to dig through your deck in a turn to find that double turbo energy. Very so. true. Very true. Yeah. So I think Zork's got potential. We'll have to see where it goes. It does feel like maybe like the best like super aff aggressive deck. Kind of like it reminds me a bit of Dialga where it's kind of like one of those things where like you go like you go really fast and you do like you take like the big KO really quickly. It, it's kind of like Turbo Dialga in a sense. Kind, like kind of it's the way i look at it it's like similar to turbo dialga so we'll see door could be the new like hyper aggressive deck of the format um, so we'll have to see on that one um but the next deck i want to talk about was actually going to be reggie gigas i know Lindsay has had a lot of experience with reggie's recently um so why don't you talk about that <laughs> it's been a week with reggie to say the least mm -hmm. um i i I don't even know what made me want to try it, to be honest with you. It's just I thought the idea of using the Thornton and the Veltal was, like, super, super cute. Uh, so I wanted to try it, and it did pretty – it did a lot better than I thought it was going to. Um, so basically, the whole idea is getting Veltal in the discard pile – um, having all your little Reggies out, being able to Ancient Wisdom, either to one that already has a, uh, an energy attached to it, it, it realistically does kind of need to be like an Aurora Energy or a Twin Energy that's already attached, or and or you already have it in hand. And I know that sounds like a lot to do. However, it's actually a lot easier to get out than I thought it was going to. And it is worth it for many reasons. Um, one... It knocks out Flying Pikachu V Max. Um, even mm -hmm. though even though the the attack for Flying Pikachu V Max prevents all damage done to it by basic Pokemon. So you're not doing damage, you're just wiping it off, cleaning it up. Goodbye. Um so I was able to get that uh in an online tournament, which was super, super hype. I didn't know if it was gonna work at first. Uh <laughs> just because like I don't know, I feel like I'm I'm super paranoid about that. I'm like, what if it doesn't work? What if it like, you know, but in theory, it should. It's you're not doing damage. You're just knocking out. Um, you can, you know, even if Gudra did a Fantina in a in an attack, but you know, there, I guess Fantina wouldn't work anyways because you know Reggie's not a Pokemon V. But you yeah. know, you're not able to ever one shot Gudra V Star anyways because you know it has no weakness and Regigigas. It's not, you know it's not a V Max. Um, so that is another way that you can just kind of knock it out. Um, you can knock out a Duraludon VMAX even without Path to the Peak out. So there are, it's like, it's, it's insane. Um, you know, I, I used it against, like I said, my friend at Locals, um, against, I was able to do it in, with, against an Ice Rider VMAX. Um, cause even the Registeel, even with a belt can't knock out, belt on the mm. Gigas can knock out. But if you believe it or not, it was easier to set up Thornton than it was to set up a Gigas and a Choice Belt. Like, believe it or not. Because hmm. uh, the same thing, the same thing with the Gigas, you kind of like be, with it being five energy attachments, you kind of either have to already have one attached or have like both your twin energy. So it's like you, it's kind of the same situation where like you, you kind of need to have like another energy or have like both your twins or something like that. Um, so it it worked out well and it was kind of filthy. It was pretty disgusting. Um, 
the list that I run runs three Pokestop and a Path of the Peak just still to kind of help disrupt a little bit, um, try to help, you know, against that Apollyon matchup. Uh, plus, you know, with I don't think I don't predict a lot of decks actually playing Lost City, um, the mm-hmm. stadium card where, you know, if a Pokemon gets Same. knocked out, you attach all all cart like everything into the lost zone because uh, that is terrifying uh especially for some of these single prize decks especially for decks like reggie especially when they're relying on a lot of that energy as well um so i i i run those the stadiums just to kind of try to help with that and I, I like it um another thing with thornton too is that i've been able to use it if if i have two um, two of a type of Reggie in the discard pile and you know I have like an extra one in my hand you know you can bench that that duplicate that you have and use Thornton to get the one out of the discard pile already onto the bench I think the big problem which I feel like everyone who plays Reggie can agree hmm. and I think Mahone even said it last week you just have your O-Rods in your hand all at the same freaking time uh, right yeah they're and you always never, there. like they're always all there and you never have a way to get another pokemon after you O-Rod it so like you're O-Rodding these pokemon back in but then you don't have a way to get them onto your bench so that was something that i was also really liking with thornton is that once i had some of those pokemon in the discard pile um you know i had O-Rod, but you know i didn't have a way to draw cards to get a ball or anything and I was just able to Thornton it and it was great and I loved it and it was so fun, so cute. Um, gift energies we already talked about. You, uh, you know, if your Pokemon gets knocked out by damage, you can draw until you have seven cards in your hand. That helps so much with some yeah. of the against this. I can't, that actually, I feel like gift energy was the reason I was able to get off the Thornton plays because it just gave me those extra cards. Uh, with Pokestop, you know, you're discarding the Thorntons. Um, so I feel like with the gift energy, that was kind of like one of the, MVPs um, that really just helped make it start right, um, and I've had a couple of people ask me like, how how good actually is the Amazing Rare Veltal? You know, like it's uh, like what if you start with it? Okay, well I did. You play Scoop Up Net. There's yeah, four Scoop Up Net in the deck. Yep. There's four mm-hmm. Scoop Up Nets in the deck. Like you're chilling. It's it's you good. could also. Thornton the Aveltal and the discard with a Reggie too force came you to work. Could. You literally mm-hmm. can. Like it's Thornton is crazy in that deck. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, I'm excited to play that. I'm a huge Reggie enthusiast. I'm still playing <laughs> Reggie in the beautiful, not the actual beautiful, but the Sword and Shield Ast Radiance format, the you know, the best format in the world. Um and that, of course, Reggie's still good, but I am like waiting for me to be able to play the Reggie in the Lost Origin format because, yeah, the Gift Energy, the Thornton combo, from what I've seen and heard, I mean, the deck sounds kind of insane. It, it genuinely might be a top-tier archetype. Like, Reggie's already, like, really good right now, but I actually think that Lost Origin, if people don't respect it, like, I actually think Reggie could be, like, a potential Tier 1 deck. Like, it has the potential for that. It's got good typing with Reggie Rock and Reggie Alecky. Even Regice can be kind of good against, like, Giratina and Gudra because you force them to have switches and that can be tough. The Aveltal Thornton. I, I know Radiant Charizard Thornton also is something people are uh, toying with right now too. Um, so I think that Reggie Thornton is just really good and I think that Gift Energy is just insane because I kind of agree with you. Like My issue with Reggie has always been like the deck's good and it's like so fun when it pops off but if you're not playing draw supporters and like Reggie Drago's ability is not working you're not able to do much. The deck needs to consistently kind of funnel supporters. And when you play Pokestop, sometimes you lose your supporters. Or sometimes you have to, like, research away a lot of supporters at once. I've had that happen many times with Reggie. And the Gift Energy makes it so you don't really care about the supporters that much. Because Gift Energy does help you a lot. And I think Gift Energy is arguably the best card the deck got. I think Reggie could work, honestly, without the Thornton combo. Like, if it just had Gift Energy, the deck would still be in, like, another stratosphere of, like, how good it is. So yes, I'm, it, it does yeah. make make it better. Like, I'm sitting here, like, hyping on the Veltal and the Thornton mm-hmm. and all that, but, like, I wouldn't even been able to get those plays off if it wasn't for the extra draw support with the Gift Energy. Yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of my losses with Reggie are literally because I draw poorly and I can't find a supporter in time, or I pokey stop like a bunch of supporters away, and that kills me in the late game. And the gift energy is just like, you don't got to worry about that. So, yeah, gift energy is insane in Reggie. Uh, but another single prize deck to come out of Lost Origin is actually the new Arcanine. Now, Arcanine, very reminiscent of a card called Gramble from Lost or, or Lost Thunder. Where basically Arcanine can attack for zero energy. Its attack does 160 damage if you have no cards in your hand. Now you can combine this with, you know, Galarian Meowth. You have 
Peony, you have Ultra Ball, you have Quick Ball. There's actually a lot of really easy ways to put your hand down to zero. And you want to combine that with Radiant Venusaur, where at the end of your turn, you can draw cards until you have four in your hand. So you attack with Arcanine, you use Venusaur's ability to draw until you have four, which sets you up for the next turn, so you can kind of keep chaining the attack over and over again. And I've actually seen a lot of different Arcanine lists. The one that I'm using is using Zoark, obviously, so you can kind of keep the Arcanine going. And I'm also playing Mightyena. Arcanine is a fighting Pokemon, which is really good against Arceus, but not so good against... Mew VMAX, and that's where the Zorak Mightyena comes in clutch, because you can just kind of knock out Mew pretty easily. With Peony, you can go, like, Peony for Choice Belt, Mightyena, if they have, like, an Oracorio in play. And I also play a Flapple in my deck um, with four Capture Energy, so sometimes you can use ah. Flapple. Yeah, Flapple can be really good. It catches the opponent off guard. You can do, like, a big chunk of damage. I've seen some Arcanine lists using Slowbro in the deck with Twin Energy so that you kind of have that, like, checkmate. My issue with that is that I don't know if you're able to consistently pull off Slowbro Twin Energy. You need the Twin Energy at, like, the exact moment you want to use it. I actually don't know if that's easy to pull off. And if you go Slowbro, because if you attach energy to Zoark and then you Zoark into Slowbro, you lose the energy. So I feel like the Slowbro is too hard to pull off consistently. Um, some Zoark lists have also played the Hisuian Zoark, um, the new one, not the V-Star, but there's a baby version that can attack for no energy, and I think it's like, at the end of your opponent's next turn, the active Pokemon is knocked out, and I think this is a really good counter to, like, Duraludon and Gudra V-Star and Giratina, like, any big Pokemon that has, like, not either a lot of bench Pokemon or just doesn't have a consistent way to move to the bench, the Hisuian Zoark can actually be really good, so I'm actually gonna look into experimenting with that. And then also the deck also, I've seen people play Altaria and the Barrel in the deck for extra draw. Um, Altaria is interesting. I don't, I'm not sold on it though. I don't think Altaria is that good. I actually like the idea of maybe the Barrel. It basically counts as like an extra Venusaur because Venusaur has a target on its head. Uh, whenever I play the deck, some of my losses have been because they kill the Venusaur and then I lose my draw and then I'm kind of like up the creep without well, a paddle. Well, the, Art the Alt Altaria puts the uh, Peony, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Peony, Mm -hmm. what a, right peony peony back on top of the yeah, deck yeah. for for your next turn so even if they knock out venusaur you still draw it your next turn right yeah i mean I, I think there's a lot of experimentation there's actually a lot of ways to make our canine work it's got a really good type i don't think Arceus is going anywhere with lost origin and with the zoric engine you have a lot of different ways you can play the deck there's a lot of stage ones you can utilize um so i'm excited to see where our canine goes it might be like another like pretty solid one price deck in the format and i think there's a lot of ways to play it that people are just have to figure out and we'll have to wait and see what our canine deck does well in an online tournament because i'm sure that'll be the one that people gravitate towards um another single prize deck though that i've been really liking is actually the new spirit tomb now spirit tomb does uh, 10 plus 60 more damage for each spirit tube in your discard pile now, if you combine this with the Pokemon Go Ditto and you have four tombs in your discard pile, you can do 280 damage or 250 damage, sorry. And with a choice belt, you can do 280. And Spirit Tomb is a dark Pokemon, so it does synergize really well with Dark Patch. Um, the problem I've had with Spirit Tomb is consistently attacking with the Ditto and the Tomb um, consistently. With the Ditto engine, you have to play Raihan a lot of the time because Ditto does require two dark energy to copy spirit tomb you can't dark patch to ditto you have to use raihan with ditto and that can be a little tricky to pull off consistently at first i tried it with the barrel and it just didn't work and actually my uh, one of my uh, sub uh, subscribers and fans trendy b shout out to you i know you're probably watching this and you're going to say something in the uh, discord server uh. um trendy recommended this really cool spirit tomb deck using pokestop and cinchino with cross receiver and just for raihan and basically it's all relying on the cinchino pokestop engine to consistently find you what you need and Immediately, that deck started winning me a lot of games, and it was actually proving to be a really good uh, good deck. Pokestop Cinchino with Cross Receiver is actually kind of insane in the Spirit Tomb deck, because Cross Receiver, you play two of them from your hand, you can get a supporter out of your discard, so it makes it even easier to chain the Raihans every single turn. So that deck was immediately doing way better, and I, I think Spirit Tomb is a lot of fun to play. I don't think the deck has a good way to beat Pikachu or Empoleon, unfortunately. Well, actually, you can beat Empoleon. You can't beat Pikachu, though. Um, but other than that, I think the deck is actually really solid as a single prize deck. So we're we'll have to see kind of how people experiment with the Spirit Tomb. But again, this Pokestops and Chino engine, I really, really enjoyed. So that was mm -hmm. another fun single prize deck I wanted to uh, to bring up. Um, another V-Star I want to talk about actually is Magnezone V-Star. Kind of the, I, I guess you call it like the underdog of the, of the set. Magnezone V-Star is cool. Um, it's a lightning Pokemon. So we have another lightning attacker to work with now to kind of help counter Palkia. 
Now, Magnezone V-Star for a Lightning and a Double Turbo does 180 damage or 160 with a Double Turbo. And then you can search check for up the two item cards and reveal them to your opponent and put them into your hand. And basically, you can use this with all kinds of items. Crushing Hammer, Cross Switcher, Cross Receiver. You can use them with Tool Cards. You can use them with, you know, Poke Gear, um, all that stuff. The way I built it is I've actually used it with Jolteon Memory Capsule. So kind of like a super hard Inteleon Palkia counter type deck because in Magnezone, you can just go Magnezone for Evolution Incense Memory Capsule with its attack and then just guarantee the Jolteon for the next turn. And as a Lightning deck, it does have a pretty good time against Palkia. And um, when I tested the deck on stream initially, it's actually doing pretty well. And I was impressed with it. My issue with the deck is it's more of like, it's a, it's a type of deck where you have to kind of either go first or you have to gnaw with energy attachments. You have to go attach, attack with Magnezone, and that can be kind of tricky to do. I do play a couple Energy Lotto in the deck, which is really good to help dig for the double turbo. Energy Lotto also is searchable with Magnezone's um, attack, which can come in handy a lot of the time too when you want to build up another Magnezone on the bench. I have Big Charm in the deck to help me a little bit against like some of these big attacks like Giratina and Ice Rider where they can hit that really high number. But Magnezone has been impressing me. I've been toying around with my list a little bit more. I've added in a mill tank to the deck to give me a bit of an easier time where, like, I can sometimes sit behind a mill tank and I can have Magnezone on the bench build itself up by attaching, and then I can sit behind a mill tank for a turn. So I've been experimenting with mill tank in the deck because um, I feel like the deck does need some kind of, like, extra wall-type card because sometimes you're in those scenarios where you have to go attach, attach to a Magnezone, which can be tricky. Uh, but the Jolteon package is good. Uh, Magnezone has the V-Star power. That's really cool, too. For yeah. two light energy, yeah. You said hiding behind the mill tank, even with the the Jolteon memory capsule. You know, you're turning off the Cramorant, so uh, Cramorant's mm -hmm. not even attacking the mill tank at that point either. So, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, exactly. That's why I've been uh, kind of feeling the mill tank quite a bit, um, and being able to sit behind is good. And also, Jolteon memory capsule shutting off shady dealings actually makes it pretty hard for the Inteleons to attack the mill tank. Um, because when you're shutting off Shady Dealings, it's harder for them to attack you. And my list does play four Crushing Hammer. So sometimes you can go Mill Tank, put pressure on with Route. And if they're trying to build up an Inteleon and Jolteon's in play, you can spam Marnie against them. And you can also try to Crushing Hammer the energy off of the Inteleons when they're trying to attach to the Inteleon. And I actually think Tool Jammer might be a little bit more popular now than uh, Tool Scrapper. Because I don't think people are going to respect Jolteon as much in Lost Origin as the Astral meta. Because Jolteon seems technically worse going into Lost Origin because, you know, now that we have the Lost Zone engine, there's less reason to play Inteleon, I feel like. So people aren't going to respect Jolteon, and then they're going to cut the Scrapper, play the Jammer. And that's where the Jolteon kind of shines because against, you know, Palkia, they can go like Irita for Scrapper. And then there goes your tool on your Jolteon, right? But that's right. kind of where the uh, – yeah, that's kind of where – the Lost Origin meta kind of comes in clutch for Jolteon itself. And Inteleon is still out there. And I guarantee you, Inteleon is still going to see play. I guarantee, like right now, people are hyping up Lost Zone and everything and like Comfy. But I guarantee you, we're in like maybe a couple weeks, people are going to start playing the Inteleon engine again with some of the new cards. And we're going to be right back in that format. Not to mention, you know, Radiant Charizard could still be a thing. So who knows? I think Inteleon, you still got to respect regardless. Um, and yeah, the Magnezone felt okay. It's not bad. I'm experimenting with it. I think it's underrated. And I think it does have potential because it's another good lightning attacker, which I feel like we've been lacking other than, like, having Flying Pikachu and Coco VMAX. There hasn't really been any good, like, Flying Pokemon, you know, in the meta. So, or Lenny Pokemon, sorry, not Flying Pokemon. Lenny Pokemon in the meta, um, which I feel like we kind of need because Palkia, again, I think is still the BDIF going into Lost Origin. Um, but speaking of Palkia, there's one other card I've been experimenting with, and that is Curum VMAX. You want to talk about this one? Yeah, I... I tested a little bit um i tried i tried to do other things right like i tried to do right. it without the palkia to see if it was going to be better uh i tried it with the frost moth because uh, I, I feel like the whole the 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 appeal um for kyrum vmax kyrum vmax however you say it kyrum yeah, yeah. vmax mm -hmm. is the fact that it doesn't have a damage cap like ice rider so yeah. i kind of wanted to experiment in the way where um we could attach a crazy amount of energies to it to be able to hit those big numbers at first. Um, I feel like, you know, Frostmoth is also good with Greninja if you're playing Greninja. Right. Um, the deck that I built, it I liked it. It was cute, but I think that it needed a little bit more energy recovery. I mean, we're playing right. Melanie, but, you know, to get like, okay, you are discarding the, those energies. And if you're hitting big numbers, you're discarding a lot of energies. So I think that it needs a little bit more energy recovery, like maybe like energy recycler, maybe retrieval, something like that. Um, but I do kind of feel like overall the Palkia version is 
may be better because, you know, you have another attacker as well that's, you know, not a three prize liability. Right. However, I still think that I'm still experimenting with the build that I did, the build that I did, but using um, having Suicune in there because then you mm. can, you know, use Suicune on the first attack. It's a worse Palkia, but, you know, um, same two it, prize liability. Two prize it, can liability. Attack, it, it can attack when you put it down. Um, you know, that, I'm kind of experimenting a little bit more with that. I'm not I'm not giving up on my list, but mm -hmm. I, I do feel like the using the Palkia is a little bit more consistent um, you know, you're not discarding energies as well with the Palkia, but I, I kind of like my version with the Frost Moth, um, but that doesn't fit with Palkia and friends. <laughs> so, th which is why, you know, I'm testing with the Suicune and so we're going to, we'll see how that all goes. Yeah. I experimented with uh Kiramon stream. I played it with Frost Moth and Palkia and honestly, it wasn't bad at all. Um, I do think that the deck struggles a little bit against single prizers, but I actually like the deck because you're able to utilize um, Palkia and Kiram. Palkia is insane with Kiram. You can go Palkia and put three energy on a Kiram and then do, that's basically 270 right there. And if you attach for turn, that's even more damage. You have Choice Belt on top of that. Um, and I, I do like the Frost Moth, Palkia, Kiram combo quite a bit. Um, it's what I've been experimenting with. I think Kiram is arguably better than Ice Rider. Ice Rider's main issue is that it consistently has to rely on Melanie. It doesn't get to play boss a lot of the time. And Kiram does get to do that. You can you know, I play heavy counter switch in my list, so I can go like switch Kiram to the bench, Frost Moth build it up, bring it right back to the active spot, and then go right back to doing like big damage, right? So I think Kiram is pretty cool with Palkia. It's also got a really good ability where you can combine it with Oranguru and you can get energy onto Kiram or Palkia how you see fit. So yeah, I've been experimenting with the deck and I've been liking it quite a bit. I think uh, Palkia Kiram has potential. Um, will it replace Ice Rider Palkia? Maybe. I think it has, I think it has a good shot of doing that. Uh, Kiram's first attack is actually pretty good. The V does allow you to attach any amount of water from your hand to your Pokemon any way you like, which can sometimes come in clutch in a lot of scenarios. So, yeah, I think... Uh, oh, definitely Kiram spread... Palkia. Yeah, spread around those energies. Make it to where, like, you don't have one target for somebody to, like, if you if they boss that up, then, like, you're yeah. you're kind of screwed. You don't have anything to attack with. You kind of, like, spread exactly. around those energies. Yeah. 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 I think that it has a lot of potential, and I think Kiram Palkia is pretty good. And that's really all I've been testing with so far. Um, there's other decks I want to try out. I know the Dugong deck looks kind of cool. Obviously, there's other uh, Vs out there, of course, in the set to try out. Um, but I, I really am happy that Lost Origin is out. I am really excited to experiment with those Mirage Gate engines, not just with the new cards. But I trust me, I have thought of a lot of Mirage Gate decks with yeah. Lost Origin. Like, I've thought of a lot of them. There's, Frank, you can... Frank was playing it with <laughs> um, with the Amazing Rare Rush, uh, Rushiram. Ooh, using like an os a lost yeah. zone, and then I I played a little bit on stream, and it was it's fun, it's fun. Mm. Yeah, that, it Mirage Gate is an insane card. Um, you literally could play with anything. You could play with Draladon, Rayquaza V Max. You could play it with like it's just a lot of things. Like even other amazing rares, right? And I think Mirage Gate is like going to be the card that people are going to figure out <gasps> how to make work the most out of any card in Lost Origin. Kekun. And I, ke ooh, Kekun. oh, creamy. That I somebody brought that up in one of my streams last night. That is also kind of a genius idea. That is a genius idea too. I'm hitting the see, lab. Like, see what I tell you? Mirage Gate is like the ideas are blooming. They're blooming. There's so many. <laughs> it's it's insane. And We're gonna the, have a shuffle thought, garden of ideas here. Yeah. Next episode is gonna be all about Mirage Gate because it's that <laughs> kind of a card. That's crazy. No, but yeah, Mirage Gate, I think it's the best card in the set. And I think for the next episode, I think we're going to be talking a lot about Mirage Gate because by that point, I will have played quite a few different Mirage Gate decks. And I got a lot of cool ideas for Mirage Gate. I have the secret deck IRL built Ooh. that does play Mirage Gate as its engine, and I'm excited to try it out. Um, we'll see how it all goes, though. Um, but I think that'll kind of conclude today's episode of the Shuffle Pod. Uh, so you have any final thoughts before we kind of end things off here? I don't have any other final thoughts. I think we pretty much hit it all. It's been exciting to talk about. I'm excited for um, the Baltimore region to be over with and then the uh, the next region, yeah. the Peoria regional, so we can get a little bit more decks from the Lost Origin set. I'm excited to see how some of these shape out, um, which ones will kind of, you know, take over, you know, people pr people's predictions, if they were correct about certain things being more powerful than yeah. others. Um, stonks and Big Parasol, like Secret Rare, Big Parasols are like $2. Get them now while they're cheap. So yeah, I don't, cheap. I don't have anything. Uh, any last thoughts for you? Uh, not really. I am going to be going to Baltimore. So actually, by the time this episode goes out on the Thursday, I think I'll probably be on my way to Baltimore now with Zach. 
Um, so I'll be in Baltimore, um, which is going to be fun. I, I know it's going to be the good old Astral Meadow. You don't get to play all the new cards. What a shame. I don't know if there's any side events there for Lost Origin. I know there's a GLC side event, which I have already prepared for. But we'll have to see how it all goes. But I will be in Baltimore by the time this podcast episode goes up. And I'm excited to see what I can do at Baltimore. I think I already know what I'm playing at Baltimore. I've kind of made that public. I'm playing Reggie to Baltimore. I'm not I'm not hiding it. I'm playing Reggie to Baltimore. It's the play. Because um, <laughs> it's good. It's good. And I've done well with it. So right. that's really all I have to say for my final thoughts. Um, I think by the time the next episode goes up, we will have a lot more to talk about. From Lost Origins, because we will have played more decks. We would have seen even more tournament results of Lost Origins. We'll get to see how the meta evolves even more. So we'll have to see how it all transpires. But uh, I think that'll be it for us today. Thank you for watching this episode of The Shuffle Pod. Um, if you want to watch it on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever you listen to uh, podcasts, it'd be appreciated if you went ahead and maybe gave it a review, a five-star review or whatever. And uh, that'll be it for us. Until next time. Peace. The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Atlas Collectibles, the best place to buy any trading card game product online. Visit atlastcg.com and at the checkout screen, make sure to use code TSS12 to save an unbeatable 12% off your entire order. Atlas Collectibles will ship your product anywhere in the world, so make sure you're taking advantage of the 12% savings with TSS12. And if Pokemon is not your thing, don't worry. Go to atlastcg.com and see all the other amazing trading card game products they have there to offer. The Shuffle Squad is partnered with PTCGO Store to provide our community with the best access to Pokemon TCG codes. They have codes available 24-7, instant email delivery, and you can save 5% off by using code TSS5. If you're a YouTube member or Patreon supporter, you'll have access to a special code that gets you 10% off. So what are you waiting for? Use code TSS5 today and save 5% on your next order of codes on any codes available at ptcgostore.com. PokeX Word, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon-inspired puzzles. New puzzles are posted every day and they recently launched a new Guess That Pokemon puzzle, which is a ton of fun to play. Go check them out at pokexword.com and be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. Check out the Late Night Series Season 6, brought to you by myself, Zach Lesage, and the Shovel Squad. We're going to be running a bunch of sick events for the Pokemon community, and they start on August 30th. So one thing you might be noticing here is that there's an EU time and an NA time. We have one at 12 p.m. Eastern, which works out to about 5 p.m. in London. And then we have one at 7 p.m. Eastern, which should help out a lot of players on the West Coast play in this event. That being said, we still have a lot of cool things going on. Expect similar prizing that we've had for other late night series events. Expect better staffing, Except, expect better tournament experiences. And of course, we do have a stream going up for this season as well, and I will be streaming the event on Twitch. That being said, we have the whole season up on the Play Limitless website. Late Night 51 all the way through 70 runs until we hit the, reg the Invitational on November 5th. So check that out, sign up today, and support Zach Lesage Events and the Shuffle Squad. See you there.